Welcome to the Affordable DC Generator YouTube channel. And I'm out camping today in beautiful South Arm, Maine. Off grid for four days, no cell coverage, no noise, just DC refrigeration, drinking cold beers, enjoying the wonderful view. So let's get into the power box to see how this makes camping and having no power um, way more comfortable than roughing it with uh, warm beverages and warm food. So last year I took this trip, same exact setup, had my DC refrigerator and some other accessories. We've got a pump for the, the inflatable mattress. And I had the uh, typical Amazon portable lithium power pack that had a small inverter and solar input and some DC power options and really just fell short. I spent about 350 bucks on that and I had my Honda 2000 and I felt like I was always running my generator to keep the refrigerator going. The battery capacity just wasn't there. It would only last about three to four hours with the fridge. It wouldn't power the fridge off of DC. I had to use the AC inverter, which is really weird. So 350 bucks, was not impressed whatsoever and just immediately returned it. So even though the packaging was nice, it was made out of uh, metal, uh, it was just small and had all the features on it, it just didn't work. Just uh, was, was too small for the job and too expensive for what it gave me. So I decided to build my own for this trip. And you can see here, part one, uh, the video I laid out kind of roughing in where the components are gonna be. Uh, I've got some light up front and on the sides, speakers on the sides, uh, marine radio, and then I've got a display that gives me some voltage and battery capacity, which I'm still fine tuning. And then up front, the switch panels with the circuit breakers. Uh, I've got a cigarette lighter, some USB power, and then also some quick DC connects, which go directly to the battery. So I've got solar coming in on one side, and then the other one going to my DC refrigerator. Nice thing about this radio is it's got Bluetooth so I can connect wirelessly to a phone. It also has weather band, which is really nice. So I don't have to carry my Baofeng radio. I can just tune in if I want to listen to weather. And then it's just got a little marine flexible radio. Underneath the lid, you can see in part one and two, I've got the inverter and the power strip, which is great. So I can plug my uh, pump in and pump the bed up uh, and run any other AC accessories like battery chargers for the Baofeng or I've got it to my DeWalt cordless uh, LED light. So. Lots of power options, and then of course at night I can turn my lights on and I can turn which lights on and off with the individual buttons. So uh, dark campground, I can kind of get some ambient lighting around it just so uh, you don't have to constantly have a headlamp or anything like that. So nice thing about the power box, doing, your, doing one yourself, is that you can lay it out the way you want it. If you want to adjust a radio or maybe you didn't want tunes but you just needed some battery features and things like that, figure it out, lay it out, and then go to the part two video and I'll show you how to create the bus bars and the battery box on the inside and kind of lay out the wiring, which is probably the most complicated thing. This is really just figuring out the real estate and getting the right hole saws or squares cut into the box, where inside, if you're unfamiliar with wiring, it might be a little daunting, but it's very, very easy to wire one of them. So here on the beach, I've got my PowerAd 50 watt portable solar panel, and this is great because it's super small. It zips up, it's got a little stand in the back and a bunch of power connectors on it. And this has really been a great, great panel for doing small stuff like this, like camping. Uh, this panel probably is best suited for like charging electronics, cell phones, and things like that, and maybe not powering the fridge and relying solely on this. But this is great because it'll keep the tunes going. It'll trickle charge over the course of the day for a few hours and just kind of keep things going. But certainly isn't going to recharge my battery but it's a good option and certainly something to have and we get a few hours of use out of it. My lazy camping shih tzu who likes to lay on cords and consume food, but overall does absolutely nothing. So for refrigeration duty, I've got my winter 65 quart dual zone refrigerator freezer. And this is great because I can set up a frozen section and then a cooling section, or I can do frozen frozen or both cooling. Uh, it's got a thermostat on the side, which is uh, settable. So this is a great fridge because while we're out camping for a couple of days, you can bring ice cream, keep your ice rock hard for some mixed beverages or out on the boat, ice cream, whatever it may be. Uh, you never have to go with that. We brought steak tips and all kinds of great stuff. So even three days into it, uh, we're still living like kings out here. And this draws only 65 watts of power while it's running. And in a nice cool spot, shaded area, this thing's gonna run about a third of the time. So not a lot of duty cycle on this as well, as long as you can keep it cool. The front portion has AC and DC inputs, so I can load this up at home, plug it in, bring the temperature down to where I want it, and then when I'm ready to go, pop it in the truck using a cigarette lighter, keep it powered en route, and then once I show up on site, I plug it into my power bank, and I'm good to go. 
So during the day, the solar is keeping this kind of going, even though the battery is slightly discharging, no problem with the fridge. And then that's where the portable DC uh, generator is going to come in here to get the battery bulk charged back to where I want it to be. So I've got my extension cord to my affordable DC generator, and that's going to go over to the power box. And first thing in the morning and then last thing at night, I'm going to do a quick bulk charge for about 20, 30 minutes. And this generator is going to start out doing about 60 amps into the battery. After about 10 minutes, it drops to 50. And then after about a half hour, we're down to 10 amps, and that's where I call it good. And this generator never leaves a third throttle. So when I first start off, i got to bump it a little bit and then just drop it down to an idle, and we're still feeding it 20 to 30 amps uh, to bulk charge the battery. And then, of course, when the sun's out, I can let the solar panel kind of float it over the course of the day, so that way I don't have to hear this thing running. And last year, when I had that uh, off-the-shelf Amazon power bank, I was running the Honda 2000 for hours on end because I had it, even though it was idling and not making a lot of noise or using a lot of fuel, I didn't have a good enough battery. So the thing was running for hours on end trying to keep this thing running. Even though this doesn't consume power, with an AC generator, it has to run to make power. There's nothing you can do to duty cycle it unless you use a battery. So that's really the advantage here of using the solar, the power bank, and the affordable DC generator. So even though price point wise between this and the power bank, I'm at the price point of a Honda 2000, I use a lot less fuel. I've only used about a half a tank of what this can hold, and I don't have to hear the noise. I can run this for a half hour, shut it off, and go through that the entire day, keeping the beers cold, keeping the ice cream frozen. On the back of the do-it-yourself power box, I've got two high current connectors, and what this allows the power box to do is connect to various devices. So for example, when I want to bulk charge the battery in here, I use one from the DC generator to go right into the back, charges the battery directly, and then also powers everything else that's connected to it. Now I've got a secondary one because I wanted to have some more versatility for my power box, and I've got my jumper cables which connect to the same DC quick connect that I could put over here which means that I could use this power box to jumpstart a vehicle, or I could use a vehicle to charge my power box. So on my affordable DC generator, I've got a off-the-shelf one-wire AC Delco 12SI alternator, and these run about $70 to $80, and you can get them on Amazon Prime or pretty much anywhere else. All they need is a positive and negative connection, like my kit provides. It's a one-wire, and it charges at about 14 and a half volts, and is great for bulk charging. So all you do is start the engine up, flip the throttle so it starts charging and you know you're going to get a constant output. Great for bulk charging. Now some people may want a little more uh, control over their output voltage if they have different types of batteries or if they're going to use the generator to do a little bit better charging like into a float mode instead of a bulk charge. So I'm testing a Sterling Power alternator regulator and this runs about $180 to $200 and this is connecting directly to the lugs on the generator and I've done some modifications so that way I can run using the voltage regulator from Sterling Power, or I can disconnect it and just use the one wire regulator that's built inside of it. Thanks for joining us in beautiful South Arm. We're just out enjoying uh, the rest of our vacation. Hope you are inspired to build a power box of your own. Doesn't matter what size or what capability, it's always good to have some redundant power availability, whether you're on the house, job site, roughing it out here, or any kind of power failures that occur with the utility. And doing all of that using some solar or the affordable DC generator. Take care, guys. Subscribe to our channel and then go to affordabledcgenerators.com. Throw your email in there for the newsletter. I'm always going to send out uh, every month or two some new stuff that's going on with my product line or new videos like this. So definitely subscribe there and stay tuned for more. This is what happens when you let your girlfriend connect her phone to the power box over Bluetooth. Wait, didn't Pocahontas have some bottomless pit raccoon in that movie?